All right, my fellow audioholics, we need you. We need you to take action now. The faith of the audio universe depends on you acting now. Hey, folks, I'm Gene Delisello with Audioholics, and I'm doing this special urgent message to you guys. It's time stamped. We have to get this done before February 16th. The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, is looking at their amplifier ruling. They do this every 10 years, and there is a good chance that they're going to basically knock it down. They're not going to continue to uh, keep it going. They're not going to enforce it. It's going to go away. And why is that important? I'm going to tell you why that's important. I want to show you some examples why that's important, why we need to keep the manufacturers honest. I can't measure every amplifier out there. I can't certify that a product hits its power spec. I just don't have the time. I don't have the resources. We need as many people measuring audio gear. I know there's other YouTube channels that say measurements and specs don't matter. That's a bunch of BS. Measurements and specs do matter. And manufacturers need to be held accountable when they tell you you're getting a 100 watts uh, receiver or 150 watt receiver. They need to be able to qualify or quantify how that power is rated, how many channels are rated, the bandwidth of the rating, the impedance of the rating, the distortion of the rating. So we need at least a minimal benchmark to follow. That's one thing about the FTC is they always mandated, this is back in 1974, they came out with this ruling because manufacturers were lying about their power. They weren't rating continuous power. They were doing PMPO. They were doing all these little kind of clever things to make their products look more powerful than they were. So the government stepped in and they said, you know what? You got to rate both channels driven full bandwidth at a rated distortion. That could potentially be going away literally in less than a week, which is why I'm doing this video now and I'm asking you to do a call of action. So you don't want to see stuff like this, okay? You get a, you go into a Best Buy and you see a Sony home theater in a box and they're telling you it's 1155 watts. It's not even close to that. It's a bogus rating, even though 165 watt per channel is a bogus rating, not a full bandwidth rating, not at eight ohms, not with more than one channel driven. You don't want something like this. This is a pioneer receiver. Ordinarily, it's a good receiver. It's really an 80 watt per channel receiver per the FTC. You see where it says here, eight ohms, 20 to 20 kilohertz, THD at 0.08%, two channels driven FTC. But on the front panel of that receiver, they slap 165 watt mark on it making it look like that that receiver is more powerful than it really is same thing here with the denon you see it says 260 watts that's really about 120 watt receiver but of course they're doing that one channel driven at 10 percent distortion at six ohms on tuesday um when you let the dog out you know they just come up with all these ridiculous scenarios this is why we need to keep truth in power and there's just more examples here we already covered this topic Year, uh, about a year and a half ago when I did that article, Can Sound United Save the Industry, when they were looking at acquiring other receiver brands, and we were trying to get some uniformity in how things were being measured. And I just want to share this with you. I want to talk more about this in detail. We just posted an article literally today on uh, the FTC ruling, and you can see it here. It's on our homepage. We have a little thing that says call for comments. So what's happening now is the FTC is, is looking at reviewing their mandates and they kind of prioritize what's really important. Now I've been difficult, I've been hard on the FTC in the past because they have not been enforcing their rule. I understand that they have budget constraints, they're resource limited, they can only do so much. And I know they can't go out and really enforce it as well as we'd like to see, but at least it puts the fear of God with these manufacturers that, hey, we have to follow this guideline because we could get busted. So if you read this article, it talks about what's going on. It talks about the deadline, the February 16th deadline, 2021. It's literally five days away. And then there's a, a link that I put, and I'll put this in the description in the video below. And it kind of gives you a whole history of what's going on with this trade regulation ruling for power output claims and amplifiers. This is not just for receivers. It's for multi-channel amplifiers, for two-channel amplifiers, anything consumer-related that deals with audio power in the United States. So I'm sorry, my Canadian friends, this doesn't really apply to you. I'm sure you guys have your own regulations. 
So here we have it. It just talks about what the ruling is all about. And there's an area here where you can leave comments. Now, I posted this article literally on February 9th at like 12 or 2 o'clock in the morning, or I'm sorry, 2 o'clock in the morning the other day, right? There was only six comments there. So just posting this article in less than a day, we've already got 38 comments and they're each comments on the review. So you know that there's probably more people commenting. I would love to get this comments up to like 100, 200, because the FTC has to look and read at every comment that it sees. And I don't want anybody to be rude. I want basically you guys to say, hey, we really need to have truth and power. We really need to have accountability for amplifiers and, and receivers, manufacturers. We want to make sure that they spec power, as at least as it's been doing with two channels driven. If you go back to my article here, um, I want to show you, where is it? Here it is. Okay. So I have kind of a little template that we put together here. You can go in and you can click on that link and you can basically fill it out. You see right here, when you go onto the FTC page, you go right there, you do your comment. You could basically just put this, hey, look, I wish that the FTC to save the enforce the amplifier rule, but also amend the rule for today's multi-channel amplifier products with the following measurement. Here's what I propose. This is kind of an easy thing to do and it kind of lines up with what CEA wants to do anyway, even though that's a separate regulating body. Basically, what I'd like to see in addition to two channels driven, uh, full bandwidth, I'd like to see a three channel driven spec at full power for the front three channels with all the remaining channels driven at one eighth power. And what I'd like to see is what kind of power can the receiver do under those conditions? Now, there are companies that are kind of doing their own thing. Um, one of them is NAD. I have to give them props because they actually give you a seven channel, all channels driven rating. And obviously their power doesn't look as, as impressive as some of these other guys that are slapping stickers on their face plates that double the power of the reality. These guys are actually doing seven channels driven. It kind of gets crazy when you get a receiver with 11 or 13 channels of amplifiers in them. I don't think it's realistic to say all channels driven at full power, which is why I'm giving some leeway here that you at least drive the front three channels at full power with the other channels at one eighth power and just to see how good the power supply is. So I commend uh, NAD for doing this. Um, Morantz and Sound United, they basically do, they give you a 70% guarantee. So if that receiver is 100 watts a channel, it'll do 70 watts a channel with up to five channels driven. On the higher end Morantz and Denon models, I've actually been able to validate that claim with up to seven channels driven. So that's another good uh, ruling. If we can get something like that, I don't know if the FTC is going to go crazy with that. You got to realize government bodies are not the most efficient at making change. What we're trying to do now is at least preserve the current two channel ruling. And hopefully with review, they'll look at doing something that goes beyond that for multi-channel, something that goes beyond that for more than two channels. It's really important that we have these kind of checks and balances. You guys have to put your comment by February 16th, 2021, literally five days from now. So please get on there. Click this link. I'll put the link in the description below. Click on the comments tab. Put in what I said, which we have here, this little statement. You can literally copy and paste it into that tab, and then we should be good to go. That's what I'm really hoping that we do, my friends. I want to see success. I want to see regulation, at least in terms of power claims, at least with two channels driven, keep the status quo is better than having a, you know, a loose cannon in the field where there's anybody could say whatever they want. They could spec whatever they want. They could go back to the PMPO, which is that ridiculous peak spec or the high instantaneous current spec. You guys know, you guys have been watching me for years. There's so much nonsense in this industry we're trying to keep the BS meter down. We're trying to not peg that meter. At least having the FTC there saying you have to at least enforce this two-channel ruling with full bandwidth, with 8-ohm disclosure or 4-ohm disclosure, with a distortion level disclosed. At least that's something. And then I'll pick up the slack and I'll measure the amplifiers and the receivers that we review as best as I can to validate the power claims. That way you guys can make more informed purchasing decisions.
So I really appreciate you guys watching this video and taking action. Let's get that hit count. Let's get that comment count up to 100 or even 200. I think it would just really show the FTC that this is important, that even though audio is a small field, it's a small industry, it still matters. We still need some consumer protection uh, in place. We still need some validation of the stuff that we're buying. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Just, you know, do what you can here. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, make sure you thumb it up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share this. This is one of these things we want to be very viral about on social media very quickly. We have like five days to do this. I appreciate everything you're doing here right now. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audio hall. So you get direct access to me if you want to ask questions or if you want to suggest video topics, or if you want to start your own kind of movement in, in preventing snake oil from infiltrating our industry. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you take action. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.